Here at Mosley Hill Church, we have two glorious stained glass windows, one at the west end and one at the east end. Let me tell you all about them. Mosley Hill Church was the first church in the country to be bombed during the Second World War. The roof was blown off and all the windows were blown out. When the war was over and the church was being rebuilt, it was decided that all the windows in the north and south aisles, which had contained stained glass, would be replaced by plain glass. And this made the church much lighter. All the money from the War Compensation Fund for the destroyed windows and other donations was put into the new east and west windows. The windows were designed by Carl Edwards, whose other work in this country includes the Madonna window in the Lady Chapel at Liverpool Cathedral, the windows in the chapel at Lambeth Palace, and the windows and heraldic emblems in the House of Lords. The main theme of the West Window is Paradise Lost and the disastrous consequences which followed in history and in the soul of man. Superimposed on the three central lights is a circle symbolizing the world. Inside the circle is the Garden of Eden with the serpent entwined round the tree of knowledge. Adam and Eve stand on either side, the forbidden fruit in their hands symbols of their fall. Within the circle are additional figures of a peacock, a unicorn, startled doves, and by Eve's feet, a rabbit, which all reinforce the main theme of the fall and the promise of redemption. Descending into the garden, is an angel holding a flaming sword and supported by cherubim at the entrance to paradise. The base of the circle is seen to be shattered, indicative of the corollary, the finitude of evil. Below are the seen the consequences of the fall. In the central lower lights, there are several devils. In fact, this must be one of the few churches in the country where the devil plays a prominent part. Spreading out on either side are the seven deadly sins, gluttony, envy, avarice. Next we have wrath and lechery. And finally there is sloth and pride. If you look closely, you can see their victims in thrall. Below are the four horsemen of the apocalypse and the accumulations of evil let loose by them in the annals of history. Above in the two outer lights are represented the symbolic figures of judgment. On the left is St. Michael holding the scales and on the right is death, often referred to as the Grim Reaper. The scene shifts in the top lights to the infinity of goodness above the shattered world. Angels are seen casting out the fallen angels from heaven. At the top of the outer lights, two angels hold the symbols of goodness and knowledge. In the next two lights, seraphim keep guard over the gates of heaven. In the glass that looks like arrowheads, symbolic figures in the tracery depict the fruits of the Spirit. Love and peace, joy, gentleness, meekness and long-suffering, temperance faith and goodness. High above the topmost tracery is the golden candlestick with its seven lamps of the Spirit surrounded by seven doves ready to carry the gifts of the Spirit to the world below. Binding the whole together are the Greek symbols of Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the unity of creation and redemption. 
The theme of the east window is the Apostles' Creed. This is developed in the six main lights, supplemented by the three top traceries of symbolic and heraldic significance. The central top tracery depicts the Holy Trinity. The hands of the Father, with compass and segment symbolic of creation, the cross of the Divine Son, and the Eternal Spirit in the form of a dove brooding upon the face of the waters. In the tracery on the left-hand side, the following symbols are used. A star for the birth of Christ, a wreath of thorns, crossed palms symbolic of martyrdom, lilies for purity, and a cross. On the right-hand side, there are again five symbols. An anchor for immovable firmness, hope, and patience, the sacred monogram, IHS, a crown for victory, a pomegranate bursting open its seeds, an emblem of the hope of immortality, and three fish, the symbol of the Holy Trinity. The first main light on the left depicts the Annunciation, the Angel and the Virgin Mother. Beneath is the creation of Eve out of Adam's rib, the Old Testament progenitrix of the Messiah. The second light portrays the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. The Christ child stands with hands of blessing above the two kneeling figures of Joseph and Mary. Beneath is the crucifixion. The third light commences with the Lion of the tribe of Judah, ancient symbol of the Redeemer. Below is the trial of Christ before Pilate and beneath Moses striking the rock from which flowed water, symbol of the sacrifice of Christ. In the fourth light, beneath the figure of the heart of Psalm 42, is the institution of the Lord's Supper. The lower panel depicts Samson carrying off the gates of Gaza, symbolic of the rending of the tomb at the resurrection of Christ. At the top of the fifth light is a phoenix an ancient symbol of the resurrection. Below is the glorious figure of the ascended Christ, while in the lower panel, Christ is shown emerging from the tomb with the sleeping guards at the entrance. The last light shows a peacock, symbol of immortality. Beneath are shown the ruby tongues of fire at Pentecost, and below, Jonah being delivered from the whale an Old Testament type of the resurrection. The childlike figure in the second light is an innovation and part of its theological significance helps to balance the figure of the ascended Christ depicted in the center of the fifth light. This window, like the west window, is full of composition and color within the limits of its architectural setting. So next time you come into church, why not take a closer look at these two magnificent windows? Details of each one can be found on boards placed nearby. Mosley Hill Church, isn't it a wonderful, fascinating historical building?